the air bites shrewdly. It is very cold. It is a nipping and an eager, eh? Look at that one now. I think it lacks a twirl. No, it is struck. Indeed? I heard it not. It then draws near the season wherein the spirit hunters want to walk. What does this mean, my lord? The king doth wake tonight and takes his rouse, keeps wassail, and the swaggering up spring reels. And as he drains his draughts of Rhenish down, the kettle drum and trumpet thus spray out the triumph of his pledge. Is it custom? I Mary is. But to my mind, though I am native here and to the manor born, it is custom more honoured and a breach to the observance. This heavy headed revel east and west makes us traduced and taxed of other nations. They clap us drunkards, and with swinish face, soil our addition, and indeed it takes from our achievements, though performed at height, the very pith and marrow of our attribute. So off the chances with some particular men that for some vicious ball of nature in them, as in their birth, when they are not guilty, since nature cannot choose its origin, by the all growth of some habit, off breaking down um, no, by the all growth of some complexion, off breaking down the pales and faults of reason, or by some habit that too much all leavens the form of cause of manners, that these men carrying, I say, the stamp of one defect, being nature's livery of fortune star, as virtue results be the as pure as great, as infinite as infinite as man may undergo shall, in the general censure, take corruption from that particular fault. The drama of evil, but all the noble substance over the to this scandal. But my lord, Be thou a spirit of health, or goblin damned, bring with thee airs from heaven, or blasts from hell. Be thy intents wicked or charitable, thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet, King, Father, Royal Dame. Oh, answer me. Let me not burst in ignorance, but tell why they canonized bones, hersed and death have burst their sediments. Why the sepulchre, wherein we saw thee quietly inurned, hath oped his ponderous and marble jaws to cast thee up again? What might this mean, that thou, dead coarse and concrete steel, revisits thus again the glimpses of the moon, making night hideous, and we, Hawk fools of nature, so horridly to shake our disposition with thoughts beyond the reaches of our souls. Say, why is this? Wherefore? What should we do? It beckons you to go away with it, as if it's some apartment to desire to you alone. Look with what courteous action it waves you to a more removed ground. But do not go with it. No, by no means. If it will not speak, then I will follow it. Do not, my lord. Why, what should be the fear? I do not set my life at a pin's fee, and for my soul, what can it do to that, being a thing immortal as itself? It weighs me forth again. I'll follow it. What if I tempt you to the flood, my lord? Or, or to the dreadful summit of the cliff that beetles over the base into the sea, and there assume some other horrible form, which might deprive your sovereignty of reason and draw you into madness? Think of it! The very place puts toys of desperation, without more motive, into every brain that looks so many fathoms to the sea, and hears it roar beneath. It weighs me still. Go on, or follow thee! You shall not go, my lord! Hold off your hands! Be ruled, you shall not go. My faith cries out and makes each petty artery in this body as hearty as the Nemean lion's nerve. Still am I called. Unhand me, gentlemen. I have not make a ghost of him that lets me. I say away. Go on. I'll follow thee. He blacks us desperate with imagination. Let's follow. Tis not fit thus to obey him. Have after. To what issue will this come? Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Heaven will direct it. Nay, let's follow him. <laughs> 